Red Sun back with another episode of Tab Mads. Yeah, more or less. This episode is not so much about Mads, nor about Tab. It's about the intricate Tab Mads storyline that I've developed over many, many weeks of the weekly-ish Tab Mads series. This video will give you the complete storyline, for those who are too lazy to go back and watch everything. And mainly for me, it's too lazy to make a new episode. So it's really a win-win situation when you think about it. But the story involves my endless search for the perfect home, very complicated instructions for acquiring items, Preston, and cats. So enjoy. Also totally, already leave a like on the video, because that's the new way you're supposed to be doing things on YouTube now. I've heard. And that's about when you realize you don't actually want to live in this place. I mean, it looks nice, but you can hear old people complaining through the floor. Nobody in the vault wants to help run this place. Patience, old man. We'll find someone. You've got another Mr. Pebbles poster. The first cat in space. So I wondered whether or not I could get my cat into space if I gave him a little boost. Well, apparently not, but he is made of titanium. So maybe it's a synth cat. But anyways, things escalated just a tad bit. Breathe. Got to breathe. Yeah, so this is happening. It's almost perfect, but Tinker Tom kinda gives me the creeps and uh, I just found out that they were a bunch of lunatics trying to shoot up my cat. Also, they missed a bunch of times and sort of shot up my room, so I'm gonna go pass on this one. I took a little trip to Far Harbor and I kinda got mixed up in a weird religious cult. Just place one down, or several, and start making yourself prettier. That's definitely a big improvement. Still stuck in this weird cult I accidentally joined when I took a little trip to Far Harbor, hence the outfit. So I was really enjoying this place, it looks very good, it's cozy and well lit, and I could keep an eye on the front door in case the Church of Anna tracks me down. But then out of freaking nowhere, Tinker Tom just shows up and starts trying to shoot up my cat, so I had to put him down with this gamma gun I found. Yeah, maybe accidentally joining the Church of Adam has his perks after all. Anyways, I really don't know why the railroad has a vendetta against cats that live with me, but maybe I got two groups of fanatics to deal with now. But then the rest of the gang showed up and actually shot up my cat. And then they just left a bunch of weird symbols everywhere. So my bunker is just a fucking mess right now. Uninhabitable. So instead of buying another house, I thought I'd build my own house this week. But yeah, I was really enjoying my shack. I even took in two little kitty cats to make it feel even more homely. But then out of freaking nowhere, an army of Tinker Tom showed up to try and shoot up my cats. Again. Now, I don't know how he managed to resurrect himself as well as clone himself at the last time. But even with this power armor, there was just no end to the Tinker Toms. I realized my shack was lost, so I said my goodbyes to my kitty cats and just flew off. But now that we've got a base of operations, it's time to start planning out this retaliation. I decided to finally stop being lazy and deal with this situation. We've got two groups to deal with, my fanatical cult that worships radiation located in a nuclear sub-pen, and the railroad. Some very clingy roommates with a habit of shooting up my cats and houses. But after that I could finally create my very own Tinker Tom army. Production is rather slow though, but after some time I assembled a mighty force of half-naked Tinker Toms. Preston looked a bit confused, but uh, oh well. So with my new shotgun, power armor, mini Liberty Prime, and half-naked Tinker Time since army, I was finally ready to face the two groups of fanatics that have been bugging me for weeks. Dragging me through radioactive goop, shooting up my cats. It was time for the reckoning. So I first went to assault the railroad and went straight to their headquarters. Unfortunately, my synth army turned on me as soon as I walked through the front door. You can never trust a synth. I freaking knew it. Nonetheless, my shotgun spells and infinite supply of stim packs came in really handy. Although, Mini Liberty Prime did most of the work. In the end though, we came out on top. Looking at all the Tinker Tom body parts, I felt it was only right to turn the railroad headquarters into a cat sanctuary. To honor all the cats that had fallen at the hands of the railroad. And the ones that Liberty Prime blew up that one time. Anyways, at least I won't have to buy any cat food for weeks. Well, that was one down, but I still had the Church of Adam to deal with. Fortunately, these lunatics built their settlement around a nuclear submarine. So I had a plan. Mini Liberty Prime and I stormed the front door, took out the sentries and rushed inside. Mini Liberty Prime provided invaluable nuke support as I made my way up. Once I got inside the sub, it was a home stretch. I killed the pretend high sparrow and used the nuclear launch key. I then proceeded to casually run the fuck out of there. Then the place blew sky high. Never take half measures. Well, there's been a slight complication. Preston sort of stole my sim producer and then dropped some of his own DNA into it. 
I don't even want to know what type of DNA swab he used, but he's been using that thing to create his very own army of Preston clones. I went to my castle, which has been under construction forever now, but I went there to celebrate my victory over my two fanatical groups, and uh, there were Prestons posted at the front gate. Inside, in the tower, they took over my bar too, there were just Prestons everywhere. Although these look like knockout versions of Preston, so I think something might have gone wrong in the cloning process. But they all still keep yammering on about settlements, so at least they got that part down I guess. It's literally my worst nightmare. And if the cloning and settlement talk was not bad enough, he's also started hanging up weapons everywhere. Weapons on these beautiful, filled weapon displays. He went so well, he even covered up the front door. But not only did Preston place down weapon displays everywhere, he also made himself head of the Minutemen's PR department, and he started putting up Minutemen propaganda on what little space is left in my castle. Now there's just a shit ton of flags, promotional posters, inspirational posters, slightly threatening posters, and banners just everywhere. All promoting the Minutemen cause. I worry that Preston might be becoming slightly militaristic, so I'm probably going to have to deal with that situation sometime in the near future. It also really ties together the slightly gay cowboy look I'm going for here, so I'm satisfied. So to get a rough estimate of how effective these weapons would be against Preston's, I stole some Preston's from Preston. I mean he has a surplus of them anyway, I'm sure he won't mind. Abducting kids, indoctrinating them and feeding them Tic Tacs packed with psychedelic drugs. So I thought this was pretty dark, but then suddenly I had this weird feeling that in an alternate reality I was a game show host that may or may not have condoned a slight amount of child murder and also has a weird obsession with wooden floors. What? Though to this very moment I can still hear the sounds of their tiny heads exploding. So yeah, that brief moment of pure capitalism almost made me forget about shooting all those children. But what really helps you forget about shooting children is shooting other people. And bonus mods. Anyways, one cow got slightly aggressive with me, so I had to teach it a lesson, and uh, things just escalated. But at least I got a nice wall piece out of it, so I'm satisfied. It's not about how big your settlement is, it's of course about girth. Or about how neatly it all ties together. One of those two. This one just feels a tad bit too large and echoey. And that's when I heard it. I heard mooing, echoing throughout the entire bunker. The Brahmin had finally tracked me down and come for their revenge. I don't know how Brahmin are capable of forming an attack plan. But they did, somehow. They swarmed the entire base and were flattening my dried up grass with their hooves. My. Fucking. God. See, I definitely need something to fend off this wave of mad cows. But with my backpack full of sniper rifles, I ventured back to my bunker. It was time. For. A barbecue. So I started shooting at cows left, right and center. Even though I had sniper rifles, I felt the need to really just get down and dirty in there. There were just so many goddamn cows. Pretty soon though, I ran out of ammo. Besides forgetting to pack my lunch, I also forgot to pack extra ammo. Apparently. So I had to resort to using my DIY spear. Which worked fine for a while, until the extensive use had made it so blunt I could barely kill a headless cow with it. So I resorted to using my fists. Things were starting to look bleak, but then suddenly one of the Brahmin dropped a minigun. Just what I needed. So I used said minigun to unload into the herd of cows. Things were really starting to look up. Unfortunately, a crew had assembled on the front porch of my cabin, so I had no choice but to shoot every single one of them. They even attempted to fly away, but I had the perfect anti-air gun. But the good news is that we won't be running out of food anytime soon. The bad news is that there's just cow blood everywhere. Some of it on my floor, just a lot of it on my bunker, a tiny bit of it in my mouth, but mostly in my clothes. But that's when I had this weird feeling there was somebody right behind me. So I slowly turned around and I saw a wild pack of Tinker Tops just standing there, staring at me. So without a second of doubt, I opened fire with my Sturmgewehr. The drum mag really helped me just lay down that suppressive fire. Now I thought I'd dealt with this situation already, but somehow they're back. I'm getting the feeling something fishy is going on here. Get your hands on these bad boys, you'll have to go to Spectacle Island, climb on top of this one piece of rubble in particular, just make sure you're right on top of that, and spin around exactly three times. And if you then look up, you'll see a bundle of hobby horses falling down from the sky. How convenient. He's fully voiced and has a decently fleshed out backstory. There's also more dialogue options. My god. I didn't even know there were more than four things you could say at any given point in time. You could probably shoot me in the head right now and I would be fine. Huh. Well, I guess he wasn't lying. So I'm still not entirely sure what Preston is up to with the synth producer. Last week I nearly got surprised by a Tinker Time half naked hit squad, and I can't help but think it's related somehow. I am definitely gonna get to the bottom of this. Someday. 
So I built myself a nice solar farm to provide me with all the power that I ever need. It's definitely working out a lot better than the bicycle farm I tried before. So now that I don't need my bicycle farm anymore, I've got a few extra settlers that I don't need anymore. In unrelated news, I opened up a small butcher shop that serves special meat. It's fresh and really high in protein. So you have to do exactly one barrel roll and it'll miraculously open. So yeah, this might not be the most immersive mod out there, but if it becomes too much for you, you can always hit the eject switch. It's overall a beautiful looking house. They've really done a bang up job renovating this place. The only downside is that Travis won't shut the fuck up on the radio. But since we're in Diamond City anyways, I've got an idea. Oh, uh, um... Hi. And just make sure you take us close too for uh, good measure. Now for some reason the entire town suddenly was pissed off at me and started shooting at me. So I kinda had to leave Diamond City. But that was quick, I don't think I've ever been evicted that fast. I was actually starting to like that place, so yeah I had to move back into my castle. Unfortunately my castle is still a mess. There's just Preston clones everywhere. I don't even know what this one is sitting on. And if that wasn't bad enough there's also still a bunch of Miniman propaganda on the wall. So I kinda need some different decoration to even it out a bit. So I decided to make some of my own promotional material to help expand my brand presence in a wasteland. Beautiful. Yeah, this mod is great for soliciting as well as advertising your own services. It's kinda a better fight from third person compared to first person. But it's just perfect for taking care of some unfinished business at my castle. That is much better. Maybe I forgot to plug up a hole somewhere. Fortunately though, I have dealt with a similar situation before. And continue going southwest and do your good deed of the day. Please, help! You're not killing anyone. Says you. Jesus, they're dead. And now it's your turn. Wait, what? Man, it feels good to just do good in the wasteland. So what better than the Pippische 41? Or the Pistolet Pulemiot Spagina? Whichever one of the two you uh, prefer. I'm gonna go with Pippische. It's easier to pronounce. But in order to get your hands on the Pippische, you'll first have to hit that swatter guy with a baseball bat. Flip off the noodle bot in Diamond City, and then casually blow up Travis's radio station with nobody spotting you. Then, and only then, are you able to find it in a bathtub at Abernethy Farm. Which basically means you just have to use console commands. But my immersion has been shattered. I mean, you wouldn't think so what's with the Broman and Preston clones everywhere, but my immersion is just straight out the window. Anyway, speaking of immersion, the Pippishu was definitely good enough to take out the Broman hit squad sent after me for uh, some reason. Maybe it was Preston, I mean, I did put up that bounty on him that one time. Getting these is kind of a hassle though, you can acquire them as a rare loot drop on certain enemies. Alternatively, you can throw a mini fusion bomb into your gold vault, close the vault door and by the law of infinite probabilities in at least one universe, the gold will have been fused into the Looney Tunes holotapes. Man, the things I sacrificed for these mod showcases. That was my retirement fund right there. Just gone. And then I helped some animal loving, colorfully clad people settle in at Abernethy Farm. And then to help out those nice people, I decided to set up a trading relation with Sanctuary. But now for some reason Preston refuses to speak to me. I don't know why. I don't really mind though, he finally shut up about defending all those settlements. Above that some shelves with some books and finally a bed with a giant revolver right below the pillow. Okay this won't do. Not only is that extremely uncomfortable to sleep on, but that's also just poor firearm safety right there. I'm gonna have to pass on this shack, I mean it was almost perfect up until that. Although it might also be literally uninhabitable because this place has asbestos. I mean it says right there on the box. So to get your hands on this thing you'll need to drink exactly 25 Nuka Cola Quantums. Then while you're tripping balls you need to locate Preston. Now he's still not on speaking terms with me. Not that I could really make out what he was saying in uh, slow motion. But anyways you have to squirt Preston in the face with your squirt gun. Now I may or may not have filled mine with pee but that doesn't really matter. The only thing that does matter is that you have to get him absolutely soaked. Now he doesn't quite appreciate that. So you gotta make sure that you fly away before he can retaliate. Then trip your balls to Nuka Rill and go to Safari Adventure and take a relaxing dive off of the treehouse into the water below. Then, and only then, will the Tech-9 be in the bathtub at Abernethy Farm. 
I've also upgraded the place a bit. I had to pawn off the TV, but I installed a bunch of pick-me-up stations in parallel. I'm still not quite sure what they do, but they do seem to work. So this new outfit and hairstyle is just perfect to impress this new companion named Laura in Diamond City. So simply walk up to her and talk to her. What's up? Not much. Just waiting for some excitement. Well, that was uh, surprisingly simple. Man, I am just so smooth. Smooth like butter. She's also very easy to please. I can't remember the last time I had this much fun. Just a bit too easy. She also sounds robotic. How about we just grab a beer? Ah, damn it, I freaking knew it. She's a synth. I know what they say. You can never trust a synth. There's only one thing left to do. What's with you? So acquiring this weapon does require a bit of work. First you'll have to go to Sanctuary and hit Preston in the face exactly 10 times with the paddle ball. You have to make sure it's exactly 10 times. Now he'll get angry at you and start shooting you, but once you've hit him exactly, just gotta reiterate here, it's gotta be exactly 10 times. But you then simply reload by flipping the thing around and you put it away. He'll still be angry at you though, he's got anger management issues, but you simply flip him off and you fly away. Then you need to go to Nuka World and put about 10 cubic meters of solid gold in the wishing pond. Give or take a few, it really doesn't have to be that exact. You just gotta shower the place. But uh, yeah, my funds are depleting rather rapidly at this rate. But then, and only then, will there be about a 2% probability of the Arc Welder spawning in Sean's crib. If you were one of the lucky few, you simply walk over and pick it up. I honestly don't know why everybody is so interested in Sanctuary. The place is literally a shithole. But there were literally dozens of walking TV robots in Sanctuary. They were even pouring in from the sky. So I fought long, intense and hard. Shit was blowing up left, right and center. Explosive Nuka-Cola, mag grenades, the robots blowing up. It was a very harsh battle, but my frame rate was just too low. So I had to retreat. Also, through my extensive tinkering with these pistols, I somehow turned black. I'm still not sure why that keeps happening every time. But anyways, to get your hands on this thing, you'll first have to sacrifice about 25 Bromin to the Bromin God. You then have to perform a leap of faith out of the Pridwin. Now, you might break your shins, but you'll be fine if you believe hard enough. And finally, you have to freeze Preston just a tiny amount. You just have to make sure he turns absolutely solid. But yeah, this thing right here is also pretty good at keeping your quantum cool. Anyways, after you've done all that, you then have to make your way to the very top of the Fistop Mountain, and 10 of these Assault Flamers will magically spawn at your feet. Now they do have a tendency of sliding down from there, so you're probably gonna have to jump after them. So just make sure you don't break your shins again and uh, pick one up. Anyway, since we got a flame right now, we have the perfect tool to defrost Preston. Well, that doesn't really seem to work. Eh, I'm sure he's fine. He's probably just pretending. I mean, he is a drama queen, after all. You interested in traveling together? Oh yeah, let's get moving! Gotta say, I'd feel more comfortable holding a pair of pom-poms. Okay, I think I've heard quite enough. Let me just, uh... Right, much better. Then I just had to make sure there were no witnesses. So last week some of you had some trouble acquiring that Assault Flamer. Going so far as to claim that all the steps I told you to go through were a complete lie. But I'm here to tell you that if all of my elaborate steps, such as throwing about 10 cubic meters of gold into a pond, don't work, uh, you're doing it wrong. I mean, I know following simple instructions is really difficult, just like proper punctuation, but it's alright. It's a whole brand smacking new week, and uh, there's a new chance to get it right this time. To get your hands on this thing, you have to go to the Concord Museum. Now, I haven't been there since the first time I met Preston. Now, most of that is kind of a blur. I guess that's what they call repressed memories. Now, through the magic of alternate universes, my cat sanctuary does not exist anymore, unfortunately. The real world headquarters is back to the way it used to be, with Tinker Tom and everything. So I went there and I was immediately asked to do some more bitch work. Hey you, Randolph safe house. Des wants you to check it out. Checking out dead drops is your job. Not when it could be a big old trap from the Institute. Then I just reloaded the universe and talked to Peter. So apparently he's Deacon's son and he tells you that a section of the children of Adam have become a bit pushy when it comes to their religion. So Deacon's 8 year old son and I decided to go out and save the world. Well, Deacon was too busy playing PC video games. What a great parent. So with your newly adopted son and strange color changing disappearing deathclaw, you are ready to hunt down this nuclear stockpile. But since I'm such an important person, I was let into the VIP section. So this is the fancy part of the club. A bunch of TVs, an institute elevator and another bar. And after that, it's all pretty much a blur. I just remember smudges of that night. Tiny, tiny smudges. But I'm pretty sure my pet Deathclaw adopted son and I had a really good time in the VIP section of the club. 
I'm definitely a very responsible father. But you do get excellent shin protection, which should really help you out with those high drops. You don't have to hit him exactly once in a crouch region with your tactical flamingo. So to get your hands on this thing, uh, well you can just craft it at a weaponsmith workbench, but that's boring. So an alternate way of getting the abacan is to first assassinate the mayor of Diamond City. Then, while well, you're busy coughing up tiny bits of bottle cap, jump straight down and leave the crime scene. With your new shin guards, you should be just fine. Then test out how much of a baseball player that swatter guy actually is. Okay, apparently not much of a baseball player. Also, nobody seemed too bothered about this untimely demise. And finally, you have to try and make up with Preston. Some things are unforgivable. Which didn't entirely work for me, but it's important that you try. Then you have to go back to Fiddler's Dream and just go inside your tank, and you'll find out that about 500 of them have magically appeared in your cozy little home. Instead, follow the hole in the wall and jump down into the sewers. This place is relatively safe, there's a bit of radiation, what's with the dirty water, as well as uh, hungry cannibals that will try and kill you, with pool cues. I mean, even my rock hard, rigorously trained abs were poking through the ab plate. And my abs have to stay absolutely protected. Which I really didn't mind all that much. Which is a little Russian submachine gun. So to get your hands on this thing, you have to go to the institute and head into the robotics department. Once you're in there, slowly walk up to the little pond and you'll notice that the Kiparis has emerged from the goop. It is 100% organic. Also, I think due to the sun's reflection on the snow, I turned black again somehow. I still don't know why that keeps happening to me. We are truly just checking out a shit ton of weapons this week. So to get your hands on this thing, you have to go kill one of those gorillas, then take it back to the institute and place it inside the goop pond. Then bury it below exactly 399 bottle cap mines. Then try to stand back and, uh... So once you stop seeing double and your ears have stopped ringing, simply pick up the heavy machine gun from the gorilla that is still intact somehow. Some gnomes, a mailbox, and a suit of power armor with a new Coca-Cola giving you a thumbs up. And I mean, I like getting a thumbs up. It makes me feel appreciated. I think that's what they call subliminal messaging. I hope it's working. Anyways, that was not it for this week's mods because we've got a number zero this week. Yes, we've had so many freaking mods, the calendar broke this week. To actually get your hands on this outfit though, you're gonna have to eliminate a real world operator. But they are quite difficult to track down, so instead you're gonna have to set up a trap. And for a trap, you need a secluded location, so go to Spectacle Island and carefully position your bait there. A kidnap synth, since the real world seems to love them so much. Oh yeah, you're also gonna have to kidnap a synth first, but uh, that is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't bother you with the details. Then I also placed down one of my cats there, since the real world seems to be a fan of tracking them down and shooting them up. And sure enough, within minutes, a half-naked Tinker Time showed up to shoot up my cat. So eliminate him and he'll have the armor on him. And suddenly, I noticed a bunch of kids showed up to avenge their leader. Then they all charged at me at the same time with their tiny pool cues. Fortunately, they mostly lit themselves on fire with their Molotov cocktails. But I decided that things were getting a tiny bit too hairy on that roof for my liking. So I walked over the tiny kid bits and I went for a swan dive. That was a close one though. Then all that remains is just assassinating Donald as well with your slightly beefed up fat man. Because we all know that only Preston can and will make the commonwealth great again. Mainly by having you do all the hard work, but uh, that's besides the point. I then tried to terminate our companionship prematurely. But it kind of backfired because he seems to be invulnerable. So I then casually exited the house and nuked the place from orbit. Just to be sure. Are things alright between us? Well, you're okay. Nothing amazing, but, you know. Man, that stung right there. To test out her comet abilities, I took her to hunt down some John Caleb Brappertons, one of my favorite hobbies. Now, at first I thought she could handle herself, but then she got body slammed. But when it was all done and over which, she gave me the thousand yard stare. What are you thinking about? Your thoughts? What are you thinking about? Your thoughts? Well, Preston's Secret Service found me and I woke up to a bit of a surprise. Ah, <sighs> oh, what a beautiful... Oh, sweet Jesus, not again. I'm also really going to have to deal with this Preston problem sometime. Well, we've got a new house for like the 20th time. Some new clothes, but we're still missing something. 
Oh yeah, right, a gun. But what's better than one gun? Well, about 500 of them, so at number one this week we've got modern firearms. But most importantly, you can jump down straight in front of your bar. The possibilities are truly endless. My funds are sort of run dry was with the penthouse and uh, about the 5 million guns I bought last week. So it's a bit smaller than I'm used to, also the floor is kind of a mess. Then there's a live wire ready to electrocute me if I make one wrong move. And I can hear Hillary's speech through my window. And finally, if I walk up to my periodic table of elements, it starts talking to me. Hey you, looking for work? Asking me whether or not I want to work on a corner. Man, tends to be rough. Now to get your hands on these armors, it requires a bit more work. This is no simple chemistry station job. First off, you have to grab your balaclava from your home and good neighbor. Also, be sure to take a minigun right before you exit the door. Call in your TES-51 power armor right next to the homeless guy at the market. And then you are ready for the heist of a lifetime. So go inside Fallon's basement with your balaclava on and as soon as you're there, you can already see the goods. But you can't leave any witnesses, so you gotta take care of some business. As soon as that's taken care of, you can pick up the armors. Once the place has been absolutely stripped, you can leave the same way you came in. Your getaway ride should be right there. So enter the power armor before you get hit by a baseball bat and try and shake off the guards. When that fails, it's time for plan B. Man, that was a close one. It's actually a top 10 this week, not a top 5. I clearly need to cancel this series. It's never been, and it will never actually be, a top 5. Just go to the little house on the northeastern end of Cambridge, jump over the fence and walk around to the porch and casually blow the lady's brains out with a double barrel shotgun. Alright, now that should give me a house for the next few days, I gotta really just lay low. And as I said, the funds have run dry, I have to improvise for these houses now. So go back to Diamond City in your power armor, fend out the angry town folk that want to murder you for some reason, and head into Fallon's basement, the crime scene. Now the only problem is that the entirety of the angry mob will follow you inside, so you'll have to deal with that situation. But if you look closely amongst the bodies, you should see the new outfit you want. And once you're done, it's time to destroy some incriminating evidence. So just throw down one of your Gamsung Galaxy S8s and be sure to duck. But arguably, the best thing this mod allows you to do is push Preston off a cliff. Move. Fuck you. This might be my new favorite mod. So that's the storyline so far. I know there's still many unresolved mysteries. Whatever happened to Mr. Pebbles, the first cat in space? Will Preston and I ever make up? And will this series actually become an actual weekly top 5 series? There's just so many questions to which I still have to make up the answers. But I guess if you have good ideas for complicated plot threads, uh, be sure to post them down below. And I will continue this series into 2017, probably just a tiny bit less frequent, so it's really gonna be a weekly-ish series, because I sort of have to wrap up my bachelor's degree, and uh, I've decided to help organize this uh, sports event that's moderately sized. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna be a busy guy, I'm assuming. But anyways, I'll see you in the next episode, which will be released next year. As in 2017 next year. That's still next year. Not in like a year. But until then.